Hello everyone and welcome back to the Untrimmed Slayer Cape series. By the way, if anybody has a better idea for the name of the series, I'd love to hear it because that doesn't really roll off the tongue. Now, if you missed what happened last episode, we finished up 60 Agility and Full Graceful, as well as some Light Questing. Now we're ready to move on to Wintertop Prep. The first step in that process is getting 50 Fire Making, because that's the requirement to start Wintertop. And I'm going to be training this in Lumbridge, so I can continue to stack Air Runes and Mind Runes from the Magic Tutor every 30 minutes. First, I need to get 15 Fire Making, so I can light Oak Logs instead of normal ones. Luckily, at the top of Lumbridge Castle, there are a few spawns of normal logs I can use, so I don't have to waste my time cutting normal trees. So there's 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 Fire Making. Now we can move on to oak logs. Immediately we get 22 wood cutting, and then in the first inventory of oak logs, 16, 17, and 18 fire making. It's crazy how fast the early fire making levels go. And that's 23 wood cutting, 19 fire making, 20 fire making, and 21 fire making. And hey, I thought of something funnier than 24. 25. Anyway, 22, 23, and 24 fire making. It's almost caught up with wood cutting now. Speaking of wood cutting, here's 26. And of course, for every wood cutting level, four fire making levels. 25, 26, 27, and 28. All right, and we're almost able to chop willows and burn them. So let's go ahead and quickly finish with the oaks, shall we? 28 wood cutting, 29 fire making, 29 wood cutting, 30 fire making, 31 fire making, and 30 wood cutting. Now it's time to move on to willows. Well, all we've done is move 20 tiles to the east, but this is new content, baby. Anyway, we still have around 20 fire making levels and however many wood cutting levels we get from this grind left, so let's get chopping. That's it, 50 fire making. We managed to get 47 wood cutting in the process, did a few random events that didn't really matter, accidentally killed a goblin which actually got us a drop for Rag and Bone Man 1, and we did 3 beginner clue scrolls that dropped from Bird's Nest which is pretty cool. Unfortunately those were a big load of nothing nothing and nothing. That's okay. Next up on the agenda we have a little bit of questing. And we're going to start our questing spree off with Tribal Totem, which is going to give us 25 thieving. With that thieving level, we meet the requirements for the dig site. So that's up next. And let me tell you, 
doing this quest without teleports is pretty annoying. There's a lot of runtime. But completing the quest gives us a huge amount of mining XP, boosting us right up to 33, and a little bit of herb lore experience as well. And with the extra mining levels from the dig site, we can start the Lost Tribe, which gives us a little more mining experience, but really importantly, it'll give us access to bone weaponry, which will be really important when it comes time to train range. Next we're starting Recipe for Disaster, finishing Sea Slug, which nets us 25 fishing, and finishing the Goblin General's portion of Recipe for Disaster, which gets us some nice farming, crafting, and cooking levels. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but when we were doing the agility grind for Full Graceful, we ended up getting a genie random, and I decided to use that small XP lamp on construction, just because it means I'll only have to make one thing to get to 10, which is the requirement for Tower of Life. So that's what we're doing next. There's 10 construction, and there's the Tower of Life, which gets us up to 14 construction. Next is fishing contest with the fishing levels that we got from Sea Slug. I picked up an extra red vine worm during the quest because it might come in handy later. And as a reward for the quest, we get bumped up to 27 fishing and we unlocked a nifty shortcut under White Wolf Mountain. Next is jungle potion. But at my level of hit points, Karamja can be a dangerous place. So I stopped at the Ardun market to steal from the cake stall just until I got 26 thieving though. This is also why I mentioned picking up the anti-poison in episode 1. It can be really easy to get poisoned and died in Karamja when you're low level. But between the food, the anti-poison, and protection prayers, this quest was a bit of a cakewalk. One thing to mention if you're planning on doing this quest yourself, is that it's definitely worth getting an extra copy of every herb that Trufidus sends you to get. All of them but one have a role to play in different quests. In total, an extra two snake weeds, one extra Argergal, one extra Valencia Moss, and one extra Rogue's Purse. But with Jungle Potion done, that's an important prerequisite for some later quests, as well as some nice herb lore experience, boosting us up to 19 herb lore. But that's all the questing that we're going to get done for now. The next grind is going to be many hours of fishing. Why fishing, you might ask? Well, this is all my sneaky scheme to get a bunch of free construction experience without having to make the planks myself or spend money on it. But we'll get to that part when we get there. The first thing I want to do is get the angler's outfit, which boosts all fishing XP obtained from actually fishing by 2.5%. And to get the angler's outfit, we're going to have to do one of Old School RuneScape's least enjoyed minigames, Fishing Trawler. Now, I don't really understand why this is one of the least enjoyed minigames in RuneScape. Personally, I didn't think it was that bad. But judging by the chat logs from when I was doing it, people do not like this minigame. But anyway, let me explain how this minigame is going to work for me. As soon as I spawn in, I'm going to run to the top deck and just wait for tentacles to spawn. When they do, I'm going to chop them. And then, when they break the rail, I'm going to try to repair it. And that's pretty much it. You might notice that contribution bar at the top of the screen. That doesn't really matter. You only need 50 contribution to be eligible to get the angler pieces. And at a rate of 1 in 12 for each piece, it should take an average of 48 runs to get the full set. So let's get this bread. Do we get lucky on the first run? No. We get nothing. 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 Oh boy, this is going to take a while.
And that is it. All four pieces of the angler set have been obtained. And although I went a little over rate, it took me 58 runs to get this set. Honestly, it wasn't too bad. We got a few fishing levels and a few construction levels, and I feel ready to start Temporos in the next episode. If you're enjoying the series so far, please consider leaving a like. And if you want to see more of it, consider subscribing. And of course, as always, I hope all of you have a wonderful day.